Good morning, folks. Today on Thanksgiving, I'm grateful for many things. One of them is you. Everything from supporting our books to clicking the like button. Today, it's my turn to show my appreciation. But first, we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the bright active regions, but they had a quieter day of flaring. Solar wind is calming down as well, but we can look to the incoming limb and fully appreciate the significance of the plasma filament activity in addition to the rise in sunspot number. Around half the CMEs are actually filament eruptions rather than from flares. Top quake of the day struck 6.1, luckily out in the middle of nowhere. Let's go to our first science news of the day. Folks, Venus is utterly perplexing. Its fastest winds recently got faster. Its rotation speed was questioned. It's the only planet spinning the wrong way, and the only person to correctly predict its temperature was Velikovsky. Diehold believes as the planets move outward from the sun, the Earth will become Mars and Venus will become the next Earth. And the mystery continues today as apparently, Earth was once like Venus. Does that suggest that in time, Venus will become the next Earth? perhaps as Earth becomes the next Mars? Let's come back from theory to practical biophysical interactions. Important dysfunction related to space energy exposure can be traced to the mitochondrial interference of it. This was discovered in rodents and was confirmed in astronaut Kelly, the one who's basically spent the last few years playing guinea pig for NASA's space travel and health study programs. This would not be the short-term critical events we usually discuss, but the long-term ones, like development of capillary issues, cataracts, or physical deterioration. Quick reminder before our top news story, there is one day left in the Hemp Lucid giveaway. If you've missed the last week of shows, they love observers, support the show, and want to show their appreciation. Now folks, before I show mine, this next story may one day end up completely breaking science. I have hours of work to do on the citations and math and modeling. But if this is legit, it is a bit of confirmation about the dueling timelines of the slow and the rapid coexisting together in the universe, and also a window into a much more complex version of the everything is connected paradigm favored by many. I don't think we have any idea of the connections. In terms of the paper itself, it's mostly discussing the transport of small celestial bodies, where things believed to take tens of thousands to millions of orbital revolutions are really only a few decades scale in terms of their dynamics and potential chaotic transport. If it works for asteroids, it works for anything. If this is remotely accurate, it applies to more than just stars and planets, but all orbital systems, and the interconnectedness of the universe is beyond our wildest imaginations. Now folks, there is a new page on observatoryproject.com. We want you to design a campground. You have five acres, consider it a flat plot. Please read the details on the page. This is all of them. It's not complicated. Either do it on a computer or draw it on a piece of paper and take a photo with your phone and email your creation to Cat by the end of the month. It's a very short timeline, yes, but big prizes. Cat and I will pick our four favorite and give each creator $500 and a spot in the morning show. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.